In this video, we're going to talk about gravitational potential, otherwise known as phi. Now, what exactly is gravitational potential? Well, it describes, first of all, a point in space, and it tells you how much GPE per unit mass an object would experience if it were placed over there. Okay, so, so how, how do we calculate it? Well, the formula phi is given by minus g m over r. And so if I have a mass m over here, it could be a planet, a star, or whatever. And the distance from this point to the center of this mass is r. And the potential at this point will be negative minus, minus well, okay, negative g m over r, where g is the gravitational constant. Now, what we want to do in this uh, short video, we want to explain the physical meaning of minus g m over r. And so for now, let us simplify this whole thing. Let's use, a, let's use a number. We like to work with numbers. So let's say phi for some reason is minus 100 joules per kilogram. And so this means that if I think of an arbitrary point called infinity over here, so infinity is just a point that is really, really far away. Okay, and we have a unit mass, okay, a one kilogram mass that we're going to move from infinity all the way to this point of interest like so, okay, then minus 100 joules per kilogram is basically what the work done by some external force, okay, the work done by some external force in bringing this one kilogram mass from infinity to this point over here. Now, if you think about it, you'll be like, well, hold on a second. Gravitational fields are attractive. And so that means that do I actually need to do anything to bring him in? No, he's just going to fly in. But the problem is he's going to accelerate. And if he accelerates, it means there's going to be a change in kinetic energy. And so the work done by this external force will no longer equal to the change in the GPE per unit mass. But it will equal to the change in GPE per unit mass plus the change in Ke per unit mass, which is not what we want. And so we want to ensure that this Ke term is zero. And so the work done by this external force is important to make sure that this one kilogram mass traveling from infinity does not change its speed. And so it follows that this external force will be exerted in this direction, opposite to the movement of this uh, mass. And therefore the work done by this uh, external force is always negative, which also explains why your potential values at any point in space is always negative. So if I calculate the work done by this external force, when it comes from here to here, that will equal to minus 100 joules per kilogram. Now, another way of thinking of this, of course, is that uh, scientists define the potential at infinity to always be zero. And since infinity is the furthest point in space, if you come to any other point, then you must always lose potential energy. Think of falling off a mountain. When you come closer to a mass or a planet, you always lose potential energy. And so if you start off with zero at infinity, that's the highest possible potential you can have. And so all other potentials must be negative. Now that we understood that, let's also consider how we find the potential due to multiple masses. So let's say we have three masses, M1, M2, M3, and I want to find the potential at this point. Now remember that potential is a scalar, and so it is the point, or is the fact, right, that the net potential at any point due to multiple masses is simply the scalar sum of all the individual potentials, right? And so we can calculate phi1 due to him, right? So that would be G M1 over R1, phi 2 due to him, g m 2 over r2, and phi 3, g m 3 over r3. Bear in mind that these are all negative values, and so your potential can only get more negative. It cannot get more positive.